Hello everybody, welcome back. So continuing the series of Python network automation, uh, we're going to look at NetMiko, NetMiko to automate config changes. Now these could be on Cisco devices or Juniper or F5 or take your pick. Um, the syntax will obviously be specific to the vendor you're dealing with, but the overall concept remains the same. So if you've got access to Python on your network, um, I'm using Linux here, but if you had a jump server, for instance, that was able to run Python, then you could write some Python code and then you could connect to the device and edit the config. And obviously the benefit of this is that you can prepare it all in advance, you can test it in your lab, and then you can schedule it or you can roll it out multiple times. You can read the IP addresses from a CSV. So if you want to update, for instance, the default gateway across um, 40 switches, then this would be a, a nice way of doing it. Um, obviously, there's much software out there, SolarWinds, um, Thwack, Splunk, whatever you want to uh, choose, but they are paid for. And if you're looking after a, a network on a budget, then you probably don't want to be forking out for thousands and thousands of dollars or pounds worth of their software per year. And obviously, their licensing is typically based on number of devices so if you've got 300 devices then typically the licensing might be three thousand dollars say per year um, and really much of the things that you may want to do could be done quite simply with python and um, what's between here and here <laughs> no not sunglasses uh, <laughs> your brain so um, without further ado, if you'd like to see some code, let's have a look at upgrad.py. <laughs> um, my typing skills are not the best, and I left the E off the end, so it should be upgrade.py. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to do pip install netmiko. N-E-T-M-I-K-O. Netmiko is uh, a new and improved version of something called Paramiko, which you may have seen before, which uh, allows you to connect using Telnet. Obviously, Telnet is now superseded by SSH, so Netmiko is a nice way to establish an SSH connection to your device. Um, so SSH2, and if you're familiar with that, you typically need to pass um, host host uh, name or IP address uh, here I'm going to be using the IP address so it's 192.168.1.30 which is the IP address of my Cisco switch which I have down here which you probably can't quite see but it's a 3750 layer 3 Cisco switch 24 ports uh, it's running iOS 12.2 because it doesn't have enough flash to upgrade to iOS 15. Anyway, you don't want to know about that. You want to know about the Python code. So um, let's begin. Import subprocess re time netmiko. Um, in fact, I don't yet know if I need those three, but uh, for the sake of this, we'll leave them in. Uh, date time, we will leave that in as well. So from netmiko, import connect handler and um, Sorry about the flickering on the screen. I don't quite know what that's, where that's from. So we import connect handler, and that's what obviously handles the connection to the device. As you can see here on lines 14 to 20, we have a Python dictionary. Um, now, if you're familiar with connecting to databases with SQL, for instance, you will see something very similar typically. <clears throat> uh, you would want to hide the username and password, so you would use uh, config pass or, or keep the connection details in the environment variables. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm leaving them visible. and. The dictionary is passed with the um, quags, the double star in front, which uh, tells the connection handler to accept however many number of arguments it uh, is being passed in the dictionary. And net underscore connect is the netmiko uh, method. And then we will, 
or sorry, it's the variable we create, which is um, based on the NetMeco connect handler method. And let's just run it, shall we? So what we need to do first is do something. So I'm just gonna uncomment these two lines. We've got output, which is um, the net connect send command. So we're gonna send a command and convert it into a variable, which we will then print. So let's run this. And let me just bring up, uh, it just looks nicer in the terminal and it's just easier to read, especially on, on a video. So um, sudo python upgrad.py, so it's gonna run this. And pass, wrong password. Oh. No module names NetMeco. Let's just do chip install NetMeco. I think it's going to tell me it's already installed. I think this is, um, let me just, I'll run it without sudo. No, so to get that, let's run it from, we'll use Code Runner. And that's a lot better. Um, <clears throat> Okay, it's specifying the full path. It's probably a, a path issue. Anyway, what we've just done is we've connected to my switch, which is down there, and we've run a um, show IEP interface brief command, which shows us uh, all of our VLANs and then our physical interfaces, and they're all down, obviously, because there's nothing connected into most of them. So. Um, that's how to show IP interface brief, which is probably the first command you would ever want to try. Let me comment that out. Next, we are going to edit the candidate configuration. It's not even the candidate, it's, uh, well, it is the candidate, because until you save the configuration, um, it's just the running config. It's only when you save it, write mem or copy run star that you actually save the config. So um, if you make a mistake with your configuration, just don't save it and then reboot the device. Um, let's just, so. Config commands. Config commands uh, is what we pass to the send underscore config underscore set. So using the net connect object again, which is what connects with the correct credentials. So we've got net connect, then we've got send config set, which tells it to run these commands exit underscore config underscore mode equals false. Um, that's I've left that in from the example I was doing, and let's just see if uh, no. Okay, so we will. What we attempt to do is we're going to attempt to type over. Um, we're going to change the host name of this switch. Before I run this, let's just um, let's just connect to it, and I'll just show you what it is now. Otherwise, uh, it's a bit pointless because you're not going to see what it's looking like before so um ssh admin at 192.168.1.30 paswrd there we go so the router name is currently router one show ip int brief x unassigned there we go. So we've got uh, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30. So the code that I'm going to run shortly is going to add us a new VLAN, VLAN 23, and it's going to give it a description of Dr. Pi. So let's just um, exit out of that. Run this code. So it's showed it's ah, it showed the old uh, 
sorry that was old that was old ignore that so um come across back across here connect reconnect p a s s w r d show ip in brief <clears throat> and it didn't work why was that oh right back to the drawing board let's fix that um slight faux pas on my on my part i didn't um didn't save the code so if you'd like to see it work properly let's try again so um the router is r1 and there was just uh there was reveal on 10 20 and 30 so if we just run this again there's all right put and what it's done is it has changed the host name it's changed the description of vlan1 and it's added vlan23 and it's uh added a description so that's what vs code tells us it's done but we want to just go on and check don't we because uh we don't really want to just trust what vs code tells us And it's changed from router one to red and green, which is good. Show IP in brief, exclude, well exclude the unassigned interfaces. And it has not created VLAN. Ah. <laughs> it has created VLAN 23. It's because it was un it's unassigned, it wasn't showing. Good, so it's created VLAN 23. Um, what was the other thing? Ah, uh, yeah, it was going to um, show int VLAN 1. It was going to change the description for VLAN 1. And it's done that. Oh, and it was going to set the description for VLAN 23 to Dr. Pi test, I believe. Dr. Pi, yeah. So, yeah, that's good. What we've done is we've added a virtual interface. Sorry, we've added a, a VLAN 23. We've um uh, we've changed the router host name and we've amended the descript amended the description for vlan one so um that's pretty good and if we wanted to save that then we would just save that here but we don't so we'll just exit and um that is how you use netmiko to um edit the configuration on a cisco device or potentially a juniper one and if we go back to the uh the notes if you go to um ultraconfig.comau.blog uh, forward slash blog there's an article on there where they're showing how to do what i've just shown you really but for a juniper device so if, that, if you're familiar with juniper they're similar to cisco and the syntax the, actually the it's based on linux free bsd so if you prefer linux to proprietary then juniper would be uh the um the vendor for you and if you want to look at um kirk, kirk byers the um, creator of netmiko then go here and let's just look at his page on github um kt byers netmiko and you'll see available device types um if you want to um <laughs> yeah invalid i'm not sure what that's about so i used cisco ios but if you wanted to use a different device then um actually when you um is it let's just get rid of that and go back to my code I just want to show you something and it will be I remove Cisco if I just call it Cisco and run it we should get an error yeah you get an error and then it tells you your supported platform so um Arista, Aruba, Broadcom, Cisco, Dell, Ericsson, Extreme, HP, Huawei, Juniper. Uh, I could read all these out. 
Yeah, you get the idea though. So we got Juniper there, and if I go back up, we've got Cisco, IOS, and obviously you've got um, Nexus, XR, XC. So we've got our brocade as well. Um, let's just put that back in. Put that back in there and run it again. And it's actually logged in and run the command again, but because um, because it's just applying the same changes over again, you won't actually notice any difference, but it has actually logged in another time. So if you were looking in your syslog, you would actually see another login. And um, talking of logs and syslogs, if you're going to run this, run it in your lab first, because otherwise if you, <laughs> if you just run it, you could cause all sorts of problems and also you could lock yourself out. So another good tip is if you're about to do some changes, um, particularly if you're doing them out of hours, say you're doing some changes at 10 p.m., what you can do is schedule a reload for, um, for say, 11.59 p.m. Um, and then, if worst case scenario, you lock yourself out, um, you break your access via SSH, then the router reloads at 11.59, and then um, you can get back on and start again. Um, Obviously, it depends if you have a change window and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, reload. if you schedule a reload for a couple of hours from when you start, that might get you out of jail and it'll save you having to drive to a data center or try and get access to a building that's locked and then have to get up early in the next morning to, when you've had a late night and also have to start early to go and fix the problem that you've actually caused. So um, yeah, schedule a reload. That's very important. Um, Unless you've got another way in, of course, but uh, typically you won't have. So um, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope these are interesting. If they're not, or if you just think it's uh, <laughs> same old, same old, let me know. Give me some ideas and I'll um, consider them. In the meantime, don't forget to um, do what the sign says and I will see you soon with something else.